For today's illustrations, we're going to need four tools. A Phillips screwdriver, a long handle hex driver, a blunt screwdriver or pocket knife, and a torque wrench for actual installation of these components. First thing we need is the rear uh, insulator or the nut keeper. There's a nut actually inside of this insulator which we'll use to attach the distribution lugs. We have to install that in the circuit breaker. Snaps in place. I'll go ahead and put all three in place so that we can install all of the distribution lugs. Next, we'll take the first distribution lug with the screw and very critical uh, Belleville washer. This washer is concaved so that when you have thermal expansion, it will maintain the torque on the distribution lug. Slide it in place using a hex driver. We'll get it snugged in place. Now, critical to remember that we have to use the proper torque as identified on the instruction sheets for this installation. So I'm only getting it snug, but for an actual installation, you will want to use a torque wrench to get the proper torque. Okay, now that I have the distribution lugs installed, I'm going to put on the rear uh, insulating shield. The shield is required so that you protect uh, from any arcing to a back plane. I'm going to slide this into a dovetail. It goes on fairly simply. Move it all the way to the front, and the insulating shield is installed. Now I'll put the touch safe shield on the top so that you protect people from touching live components. First, using a screwdriver, Phillips screwdriver, you remove the accessory cover. Fairly simple making sure that the breaker is in the off position. If the breaker is in the trip position or the on position, you cannot remove this cover. When I remove the cover, the first thing I can look at, if I, especially if I throw away the instruction sheets with the box, I can see on the back side of the accessory cover are indicators of where each accessory can be installed. We have a variety of accessories, so each one has a specific location. Once we've identified the location of the accessory we'll be installing, we pick up the accessory, literally slide it in place until it snaps. So that accessory is now installed in the breaker. Wiring is accessible from the top. Something else I want to note for you is that once you install your wiring, what you can do in order to bring it out of the breaker is to break out any necessary uh, access points on the side of the accessory cover. Once you break those out, you can bring the wires out and run them down through the slots on the side of the breaker, especially if you have breakers that are sitting side by side. Okay. To remove that accessory in the event that you installed it incorrectly, I usually use a, a, a blunt knife or a screwdriver. I can grab a hold of that accessory and remove it and we've installed and removed an internal accessories. These internal accessories, we can put up to six accessories in one three, 125 amp 3VA circuit breaker as required. First, we have to remove the accessory cover. When we have that removed, we set it aside, will not be required for this operation. On the motor operator, we have a mounting base that is used to mount the breaker or the motor operator to the breaker. This base essentially replaces the accessory cover. So when we have that in hand, we mount it very similar to the way the accessory cover was mounted. Normally, I would use two screws to mount this base to the breaker, but uh, for illustration purposes today, I'm just going to hold it in place. Now we take the motor operator, there are two hooks on the back side of the motor operator, go into the slots, 
and it snaps in place. So your motor operator is mounted. Cautionary note on the motor operator, this handle is used to manually operate the motor operator when it's installed on the breaker. I'm going to rotate it to the on position, back to the off position. We want to make certain that when we install this motor operator that we have the handle pointing toward those dots. Otherwise, the motor operator will not properly engage the handle on the breaker. So uh, we want to make sure that we have that oriented correctly so that we can get a, a proper installation. And that completes the installation of the motor operator. In this case, we're using the flat rear connecting studs. We'll install the center stud first. In this case, the beauty of this stud is we can have it in a horizontal position or we can rotate it, go for vertical. So either way is, is acceptable. You can even put it at 45 degrees if you really want to put your bus that way. So in this case, we're going to do a, a vertical bus alignment. We'll use the screw and Belleville locking washer in this particular case so we can avoid uh, thermal expansion issues with the washer. Installing the screw in place, if I can line it up here correctly, there we go. Okay, so one's installed. I'm doing a very light torque right now, but you want to make sure that you use the proper torque on this assembly so that you maintain uh, good contact, electrical contact in the assembly. Make sure you use a torque wrench for the final operation. I'm going to install the additional two. Again, light torque for now. So we've installed the rear connecting, flat rear connecting studs on the 3VA 125 amp breaker. Siemens, ingenuity for life.